Hey beautiful people, I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant and you're watching The Other Side of the Dash. Welcome back to The Other Side of the Dash. I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and share this video. And please comment below so that we can have a conversation. Well guys, it's been a long time coming. I have not done one of these in a while. This is my life update. And there has been a lot going on. I'm not going to get into everything, but <laughs> let's go ahead and start with the February, the first one for 2022. So this is my first life update. It's February 1st. Let me go ahead and get into the details. So many of you know that my family and I moved from North Carolina to North Texas. And we have been here a little bit over a year. We moved here October 6, 2020. And today is February 1st, 2022. So we've been here about a year and two months. And uh, things are going well. Uh, where things are going slow is, so when you move into your home, you are uh, encouraged to get that one year inspection before the year expires so that the builder can fix anything on the warranty uh, before that year expires. So we had a, or we had an inspection done in September of 21. Yes, in September. And I will tell you guys, only half of that it was a long list of stuff that needed to be done and only half of that stuff is done and I'm fighting with the uh, builder to get that stuff done now I'm trying not to get too upset because things are just really hectic especially with uh, coronavirus a lot of supplies are not here uh, they're short on supplies or short on this or this ingredient to make the cement or whatever and they are finding themselves being short on workers. So as a matter of fact, the warranty person that I was working with, he had some kind of health issue and informed me that he will be out indefinitely. But before, prior to him actually getting sick, it's like I would not hear from him for weeks. I would text him. He wouldn't respond. I would call. Sometimes he would answer. Sometimes he wouldn't. And I'm thinking September, October, November, December, January, February. It's going on five months now. And some of this stuff has not got done. And that's the part I don't like about it. Actually, I didn't expect this uh, to even be a part of the process. But it is nonetheless. And um, so most of the big things have been fixed. For some reason... Up in uh, my husband's man cave, there was water down the wall on the inside, and the uh, trim was cracked between the wall and the actual trim, and it was yellow. But when they tried to do one of those thermal things, there was nothing wet within the wall, so they fixed it, and we have not seen anything, you know, any problems since then. They fixed problems that were with the roof and other things. So right now in my master bathroom, I have a problem with the tile. And eventually one day, I'm just gonna get rid of the tile altogether and just put flooring, all the flooring uh, throughout the entire house that we have, you know, in the main areas. But when we first moved in, it cracked. And it was just like two or three tiles that cracked. And they came and fixed it. And it has, since cracked even further so there's more tiles the cracks are longer and bigger so been trying to get that fixed it rained a couple weeks ago and we noticed that there was some water inside uh the window sill like water had been dripping so they're supposed to come and do that um our door lock we have one of those electronic door locks that has the key you can use the key but you can use the keypad which is what i like to use for my granddaughter when she comes home from school because she loses her key or whatever the case may be i want her to still be able to use the keypad to get into the house and that's never really worked i mean it worked maybe for a day and, and, and changed the batteries worked for another day and that was it so um the first problem was that it was corroded the batteries had corroded don't know why 
now I don't know what the issue is. So they were supposed to be fixing that. There's some other uh, little things that I'm not going to make a whole lot of fuss about. But there are a couple things that need to get done. Because they need to get done. So that's where we are. Haven't met a whole lot of friends yet. You know, they're constantly building over in this neighborhood. Before when we moved, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in front of my window in my office. There were no houses across the street. Now I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are several houses. So this is complete a complete block. So they're building further down that way and filling in what they didn't get done in. You know, there was a lot here, a lot here, and an empty lot in a house and a house. So they're, you know, filling those in uh, in that phase. And they're starting like phase three, four, five, and six. And uh, going further, I just found out that they're building an elementary school in our subdivision because it's just growing so fast that, and they're saying they didn't expect it. I don't know if I believe that because, you know, when you get multiple requests for zoning permits and this and that, you, you have an idea of what's going to happen. So, but anyway, um, that's how it's going um, in our new home. Haven't done anything major yet. I am looking at some DIY projects like a uh, fireplace in the living room, doing some uh, feature walls in my office, in the bedroom, and the living room, and just some things like that. I eventually want to tear up that carpet in the bedrooms and on the stairs. Um, that I don't know if that'll come this year, but definitely uh, for this year, the plan is to do that big wall in the living room and maybe do like some wood designing or whatever the case may be on that wall along with the fireplace and then um need to get a few new things i want a different dining room table just some little things like that so currently you guys know we have the gym upstairs and i really wanted to bring it wanted to bring it down into the dining room but my husband was like no because what's going to happen is when we do finally meet people and have people over, you're going to want to utilize the dining room for a dining room. And then we have to make all that, take all that stuff back upstairs. So what I've done so far, just so I don't have to climb the stairs every day, is I brought the treadmill downstairs with a few weights and a stretch band. So I use that down here. And I'll probably take it up, you know, when the summer comes around. But besides that, everything is going well. We're smack dab in the middle of winter. We've not got any snow yet. My husband wants snow. I mean, my husband does not want snow, and I want snow. Uh, just, you know, some real nice snow, um, but nothing that's going to cause wreak havoc like we did last year. It's February. That last uh, snowstorm happened in February, so we'll see uh, what happens. We usually have our last frost in February, so we will see how that goes. Um, yeah, as far as the house, that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's talk about my health. Wow. So, it's, n it's not necessarily bad. So, let's just start first of all and just say, look, I have not been on keto since I told you last time I was not on keto. I think the last time I was successfully on keto was the Thanksgiving before we left North Carolina, which was... 2019 was the last time I was successfully and when I say successfully on it for a long period of time where I saw great results I have not been on it since then it's February I am back on it the only thing I hate now is it is Girl Scout season and you guys know I love thin mints so um I'm gonna see how I'm, how I'm gonna be able to work that out <laughs> but I'm on keto I'm planning on staying on keto minus the thin mints. And um, so maybe this time I'll just get one box instead of three, right? <laughs> so that's where I am with the keto. Now, our church, and I'll talk about that in a minute, just came off of a 21-day Daniel fast. And you guys, when you're trying to do keto and keep your diabetes numbers normal on a 21 day Daniel fast that calls for no meats and no desserts. It is hard. Now the desserts is fine. I wasn't doing desserts anyway. Uh, but the no meat, no meat products, no butter, no milk, no eggs. You guys know what other option is there. 
things, well, fruits and vegetables. I mean, yes, but I can't eat too many fruits because of the sugar content. Can't just live on vegetables. So what I was doing was doing a lot of vegan foods, a lot of soy-based foods, a lot of plant-based foods. Y'all, the carbs in these foods, oh my God, I have gained probably at least 10 pounds on this fast alone. So I'm glad that it is over and I can go ahead and get back to where I need to, to, to get so I can get this weight off. Uh, everything has carbs in it. You know, even some, the vegetables have carbs, but they were low carbs. But still, I just wasn't feeling satiated. Now, it is a fast, yes. So what I would do is, the fast is just basically no meats and desserts. And then you could deny yourself of anything else. Now, I think the original Daniel fast doesn't call for you to be without meat. I've been reading the books and you can't eat certain meats, but we were no meat per our church. And uh, I probably could have done no meat if I could have eggs or, you know, things like that or butter to help satiate me. What I would do is uh, stop eating at six o'clock at night and not eat again until two o'clock. I denied myself coffee. I denied myself social media for the most part. And I just went on a complete break, a complete hiatus from work and everything, just to try to uh, get through this fast. A lot of praying, a lot of crying, a lot of snotting, a lot of, you know, all that, that process entails. So I have gained weight. I am back on keto, minus the Girl Scout cookies. So we'll see how that goes. Now, going back to my diabetes. I am not in remission as of yet. I am pretty darn close though. Now, I don't know with this fast how far off I am. So you guys know I was in remission and then my numbers went back up to 11 y'all after I stopped doing keto. Went back up to 11 and then when I moved to Texas, I started, I got back on keto but not 100% and but I was was you know watching my carbs for the most part so wasn't keto but I was watching my carbs and I got my sugar my a1c back down to seven and so I kept going you know kept eating low carb foods and I uh my insurance provides services where you can take in-home tests send them in and so on so I did one for my a1c and um I'm down or at that time I was down to uh, 6.1 so I'm getting close again I'm not sure where I'm at this very moment because I have an appointment this month later on this month for a a1c follow-up so I'm hoping that I can at least be still at the six considering these carbs and the weight gain now the insurance company our insurance company also provided a colon screening test you guys I'm bad I over the age of 50 look several years over the age of 50 and I have not gotten my colonoscopy don't look don't be like me go get your colonoscopy um, but be forewarned though when you go and get it there are going to be some upfront costs because if you don't have that $300 facility fee they're not going to even talk to you so uh, but that's not why I haven't gotten it it's just that I'm afraid because I am diabetic and I, they, they try to tell you not to have certain surgeries, although this wasn't one of them, but you don't heal like a normal person would. And there's a chance of infection and this and that. So I've been very fearful of doing this. And then when I go into surgery, I'm going to be out for, even though it's a, it's a day service, I'm going to probably be at home recuperating for a couple of days and I need to be on my A game. A little bit right now is in theater and I'll talk about that in a minute and just to be tied down to the bed and then be fearful that I'm going to catch an infection or I'm not going to heal that's the real reason why I haven't but I need to just go ahead and get it done so I can just put my faith in God which I do but just go ahead and just get it done and get it over with um, because I, I need to get it done but um, another thing that my insurance does is they will screen for colon cancer different types of colon cancer now I didn't know there were several I thought there was colon cancer breast cancer you know what have you but there are several types of colon cancer so they have this in-home program where you can send a sample to them and they will test it for various types of colon cancer and thank God that came back negative so I'm very very happy about that 
So I want to go back and talk about my diabetes and this 21 day fast because um, eating the soy products, y'all, I could never, ever, unless I absolutely had to, but then it would be a struggle, be a vegan. Vegetarian is different. Being a vegetarian is different than being a vegan. And you guys, so a lot of the products that I have been eating, which have been soy or plant-based, I have noticed in the last month that I've had a lot of inflammation. So I mentioned way a long time ago that my right hip, you know, is it hurts a lot. Um, it's aggravating me. And just all of a sudden, the left one is it's more painful than the right. So I'm having hip issues. The inflammation of my arthritis is just, you know, it's through the roof so i just know that that is not the diet for me or maybe there's something in these products you know soy might be one of them but everything that i'm eating does ha does not have soy in it but uh there's something that is aggravating me to no avail so like i said i'm having the weight gain and then you guys you guys know I'm, i've been having the uh problems with the fibroids and the heavy bleeding and so on and i can say for about three or four months it was either zero or just very, very light. And so I was thinking I was getting ready to go into full menopause. But then it comes back light, which is cool. I can deal with that. But I noticed after I started this fast and eating these products that um, I started bleeding heavy again. And more frequently. So um, vegan diets, unless I can find some of the alternate, alternate which I would hope I never have to is not the way for me to go because the inflammation is just horrible. My husband is doing well. He is has been on his job, his new position for over a year now. He's still having to travel almost an hour one way. <laughs> um, that is probably the one thing he does not like about it. Um, he is liking the job. He's loving the people that he works with. He is still looking to retire soon. So, uh, we'll just see what that looks like um he's doing well but i am trying to get him to be a lot healthier so i had declared once we are over this fast everybody is going on a low carb diet because he's going to be 60 next year and he is a black man and we know that the health risks are higher for black men older black men so we're trying to get him healthy so we can keep him around uh, for a long long time and I don't know if I mean it's been a while since I talked to you guys as far as the life updates go but we lost my mother-in-law back in April of last year I'm not sure if I shared that with you guys uh, she was 95 years old she would have had she would have turned 96 January the 9th but yes we lost her and uh, we drove from Texas back to North Carolina for the funeral and um, he's doing pretty good with that. Uh, he's come to peace with that. And let's see, what else? Besides that, he is doing A-OK. -okay. We are going to be doing a, uh, a video for you guys for Valentine's Day. And he will appear in that. So, you, you know, he can tell you more about how he's doing. But anyway, let's get to the apple of my eye, my grandbaby. My granddaughter is 11. She'll be 12 this year. Oh, you guys, I love this girl. And you guys know I love this girl with all my heart. But oh my God, these mood swings. I don't remember my daughter having these mood swings when she was her age. I don't remember having these mood swings at, at this age, at her age. It's like she's civil one moment. It's, oh, I love you, mommy. I love you. It's like... You know, she'll be all over me in the car and lovey-dovey. As soon as we stop at her school and step out, it's like, don't kiss me. Don't kiss me. So, oh my God, but I love that little girl to death. She is so smart. So, those of you who may not have known, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself because I don't remember the last life update that I gave you guys, but she is back in public school. I really wanted to keep her in homeschool, but she was like, no, just let me, just let me. And, you know, and I have a lot going on, too, as you get into the older ages or the older grades, you know, it becomes a little more difficult. So I decided to go ahead and let her go back to public school or court, you know, as long as nothing happened. And you guys already know what my 
my uh, deal breakers are, you know, she's getting left behind because other schools are other. She's getting left behind because other students are having to be lifted up, which I have no problem with. It's just that, you know, if you're ignoring the gifted kids to help the, you know, the people who are struggling, I don't think that's fair. But luckily, I don't have to worry about that in this school district because she's in a very good school and a very good school district. So I don't have to worry about that. But uh, she is in all advanced classes and she's doing very well. She's got all A's and one B and she's working on that B but I'm happy about that B you guys she's A B on a roll and um what I'm concerned though is she's starting to get bored so a lot of the things that I'm finding that she's learning now in the advanced classes we learned in ho in homeschool so she's like okay I've already done that I already know that you know so it's 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 a challenge trying to keep her challenged so what i normally do even when she was going to school is we still had homeschool um you know outside of school but i didn't want to bombard her but i think i'm going to pick that back up and maybe do a couple classes here and there just so she's not bored but the reason why i didn't want to bombard her, bar her because she's in theater you know my baby's the little actress and so right now they're doing a play called a midsummer a midsummer is it a Midsummer's Night Dream? I think that's what it is. And so they are doing the play. She's been practicing almost every day and um, going to performances and also going to competitions and things like that. So she's been fairly busy, but she's smart. She's getting tall. She's about as tall as I am now. And um, we still have to learn boundaries because now that she's tall as me, and she's the only child here that she thinks that I'm her friend and not her parent. Uh, but we're working on that. But uh, her birthday is coming up in July. And I'm trying to think of something big to do for her birthday. Um, you know, to celebrate her milestone. So she has a few friends in school. Um, a couple of them are boys, which I have no problem with. Uh, Kayla, I have no problem with girls being uh, friends with boys, but I let her know you don't have a boyfriend. We, we we ain't got time for that. We don't have time for a boyfriend. If he wants to be your friend with all that added extra stuff, that's fine. So she has a couple guys that she acts goofy with and whatever. And so I told her, you know, asked her how many of her friends does she think might come to a birthday party because what I'm thinking about is maybe going to the air park or uh, doing a spa day. I don't know. I, I just, I have about four months to figure out what I'm going to do and get that plan. But uh, she's so deserving of it, even though she has that attitude. Y'all, I don't know where she got that attitude from, but um, I'm praying on that. <laughs> pray for me and pray for her. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she is doing very well. Um, she's very smart. I mean, I just can't get over how smart, not just book smart. Now, there's some things you look at her, you'd be like, huh? You're smart. Why did you not know this? Or why did you do that? But just some of the things that she says, you, you, you would think that she's been here before. Um, but yeah, she's doing great. We went to her school last week. And so they start picking out classes early here. Who knew? Um, with my children, I didn't have to do all this stuff. But now they're picking out classes for the, the next. So this is February. So in January, we picked classes for her to go into seventh grade so she's going to go into uh graphic design videography photography and all that and then she still wants to stay in theater she thought about choir and i'm like no not choir because i love my baby to death and every now and then she can sound good she's not a singer <laughs> i love her but she's not a singer so um and then um she didn't want to do band uh there's other classes that she's still kind of thinking about, but we have to make a decision quick here in the next week or so for her to um, get her classes picked for next year. So she is striving. She is growing, y'all. She is eating me out of house and home. Oh, my God, that girl eats. You would think she was a grown college athlete. She eats so much. So I mentioned earlier that my family is going on a low-carb diet. So is she because although, you know, she's growing tall, we don't want her to grow, you know, to get, you know, become overweight. We want her to still be a healthy weight, um, 
Luckily, she's in pre-athletics, and she says she's going to go out for basketball and volleyball next year. So, um, and I think they're adding tennis, so she might go out for that. So, luckily, she's keeping active uh, because, y'all, the grocery bills are... Re now, on top of the rising cost of groceries, if any one of you are buying groceries, you know. Y'all, my grocery bills are up, up near $1,000 a month. That's ridiculous for three people. So, um, yeah. Y'all, if your guys are hiring 11-year-olds, she needs a job. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how she's doing. She's doing excellent. Now, as far as this coronavirus, she can't get out much. We don't get out much. Now, I, I, we did join church. We joined a church that I had uh, been going to before I, before I left Texas. Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship Church is our church. We actually joined the church, and we became, uh, we were baptized, and we've gone through spiritual growth classes, and we don't go every Sunday, only for a couple of reasons. One is, it's an hour one way. So it's a two-hour drive on Sundays. And then, although they are practicing social distancing uh, guidelines, it's just the thought of always being around a whole bunch of people. And Lil Ben and I are both uh, susceptible to catching it regardless uh, because we have underlying conditions. We just don't want to put ourselves in that. And I realize you can catch it at any time, but it's just that some, you know, days we stay home because of that and we don't want to be driving two hours you know so we do church online so yes we do that we're happy about that um so again the coronavirus is keeping us in a lot it's a little bit doesn't have a whole lot of friends i don't have a lot of friends um that i can go out and say you know now take that back i have people i can say well let's meet me here for coffee but see i'm not trying to do that uh people down here they are against wearing masks now you will find some that will wear some masks but a lot of people here do not wear their mask and you know it's starting to level off now but before like the last few weeks the rates here in, uh, for coronavirus here in texas have skyrocketed and now they have this new second i call it the omarion um virus if you guys know who that is and you you know what that is referenced to but anyway the omicron they have a second variant of the omicron virus and um I, it's not a, a chance that I'm willing to take just to go out and have coffee with somebody. You know, I get a lot of invitations to go out and do this and go do that. And I really want to. In my heart's heart, I really want to. But I just, I just can't bring myself to do that. You know, not until I know we're, we're doing better as a nation, um, especially here in Texas, as far as the virus goes. Because I don't need to be going out just for one hour of coffee and conversation bring it back home to my family and we all just drop dead you know i just i just don't you know but yeah that's been keeping us in and it's fine you know you guys know i was an introvert anyway so um it just allows me to be more creative with things that i'm doing which speaking of i currently have in the process and i'm just going to say this i'm not going to say what it is i am working on three titles I will say that much. And my goal is to have one or all of them done by the end of the year. I'm just going to leave it as that, at that because you guys know when I give a date for something, something comes up or whatever the case may be and it just doesn't work out that way. So I'll just say I'm working on some titles and hope to have them out done, have them done by the end of the of 2022. So um, that's what I'm working on. I have also jumped back into photography so you guys know i had a clientele in north carolina and then i wavered off and then when i moved back here it's like i had to start all over again so i'm starting um i did some photo shoots for people around the neighborhood i will be doing a photo shoot lord, lord willing in march down off in dallas uh, where i have uh asked some women to come down and you know get a free portrait and just to kind of build my clientele so i'm working on that and um after that i think i will start doing full pay um for the uh photography and just going with it so there's so many resources here um being that there are so many resources here there are also an infiltration of photographers here it's just like there's just every corner there's everybody's a photographer and so on but I still think that I can I can do it and be successful here 
Another thing that I had said before in my last update is that I was considering getting into real estate and I, that's still not off the table. I'm just trying to wait to see one, how I can get back in remission for my diabetes to getting past and healing from the colonostomy and still the, the hysterectomy is still on the table and how I can bounce back and uh, heal from that. Uh, those are the top factors on whether or not I'm going to step my foot into the real estate waters. I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes. Um, but to say that I am not busy with a whole bunch of other stuff would be an understatement because I, you know, I call myself trying to take a break or, um, you know, lessen the things that I do. I lessen some things and added some things. And I guess that's just the life of a serial entrepreneur. But I do know that I need to slow down. But you guys, I get bored so easily. Like my husband and my granddaughter can sit down and watch TV for hours on end. I can't do that. You got me. You got me for one movie. And maybe that movie, because my mind is really not there. Unless it's a really engaging movie, that's about it. So, um, I'm looking to make some changes. I'm just not sure what they are yet. I'm just looking for to God to uh, show me direction. And that's another thing that I'm hoping this fast has done, showing me, you know, clarification, what my purpose is. I mean, I have talents, but they're different from what my purpose is. So, I'm hoping that God will show me what that is. And speaking of doing more things, you should already know, but if you don't know, I have started a podcast, Other Side of the Dash Podcast. Uh, you can view it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Anchor FM. And I try to upload every Sunday and Wednesday. Don't hold me to that, y'all. <laughs> But that is my goal for 2022. Every Sunday and every Thursday. I'm sorry. Every every Sunday and every Wednesday. You just put in Other Side of the Dash podcast in Google. And you should be able to find it. Or you can go to OtherSideOfTheDash.com. And there's a link there. And if you haven't been visiting Other Side of the Dash. Why not? <laughs> Visit OtherSideOfTheDash.com for new content. I've been putting up articles. So you guys know this platform. That I kind of redirected other side of the dash to inspire, educate, and uh, feature those who are 50 plus and fabulous, preferably women, uh, but we don't discriminate, uh, preferably women, and and I'm finding it finding it quite challenging. So. What I'm looking to do right now is I'm trying to reach my old contact at AARP to see if we can maybe eventually host some events for women over 50. But that's just down the line. I just want to give you an idea of some things that I'm working on. But if you are a resource, an inspiration, or if you have some advice, or if you're a person over 50 who can be a resource to women out there that are on the other side of their dash, I would love to have you on you know, the other side of the dash podcast or our video, our YouTube channel. I would love to have you on here um, so that we can be, again, a resource, an inspiration to, you know, other people. So if you're interested in being on the show, the only prerequisite is that you have to either be 50 plus or you have to offer a service to a person who is 50 or plus. So if you're a hairdresser and you're 30 but you still do people's hair that are over 50 and you had some experiences with older people who come in and say they may have thinning hair or I want a new style because I want to look younger or whatever. You have something to offer to the 50 plus uh, and fabulous crowd. So, you know, contact me at info at other side of the dash dot com and let me know, you know, what you have to offer and we'll get you on the show, on the podcast, on the YouTube channel. That's where... I am with that right now and I'm trying to find more resources for you guys. I did have an interview set with a woman who works or worked for the Social Security Administration but she backed out. She said she just felt like she wasn't, um, what is the word I'm looking for? She wasn't in a position to, to give advice on that. And I, I beg to differ because even though she's no longer with it, she could still give some basic information. But I respect that, you know. But if you're a person who 
is um, or has worked with Social Security, disability, veterans, um, health insurance, uh, tax benefits, buying a home. As you guys know we've already had a couple realtors, but I'm not opposed to not not opposed to having more. But I don't want to saturate the channel with realtors trying to sell homes. So I just want just different things that we suffer from arthritis. Uh, uh, retirement, financial planning, uh, empty nest syndrome, relationship issues, uh, taking care of your grandchildren, you know, being there for your children, just different things that we're looking for that can assist the 50 plus and fabulous crowd. We want to hear from you. Uh, you can comment below. You can, again, email me at info at other side of the dash dot com. You can catch me on any of the other side of the dash, uh, platforms facebook actually we're not on facebook actually we are on facebook but facebook won't let me change my name from yolanda johnson bryant uh to other side of the dash but i don't post there that much anyway but still you just go in and put other side of the dash and i should come up uh definitely on instagram definitely on twitter um y'all i'm starting to do some tiktoks and what's the other one that used to be popular uh, with the little ghost y'all help me out here what is that snapchat <laughs> see y'all look y'all pray for my for my memory here but uh snapchat and uh tiktok so because that you know it's all the rage and the little ones like grandma you gotta get on uh 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 tiktok you gotta you know Look, she's not on TikTok much as I know. You know, I let her go on every now and then. You know, and she, what she's doing with her phone and stuff at school might be another story. But I know what she's doing on her phone because I have filters on that phone. But nonetheless, she's like, you know, there's a lot of older people on TikTok. And she's right. There are a lot of people on TikTok that are my age. And it's funny. I interviewed um, Pam Perry. You can go back and look, look at a, uh, uh, a past episode. And she said, you know... She gets in there with the young people. She says she stays in her lane, but she does, you know, what she knows how to do. And, and, and I agree that you just be comfortable in the skin that you, that you're in. And that's what, that's what I've been doing. Look, I'm not dead, you know, <laughs> you know, um, so the last thing I want to talk about is my garden. So if you guys know that I have or I had started a garden when I moved in here. I started planting my garden after the, the that snowstorm we had here in Texas last February. And it was going so well. Planted a lot of fruits and vegetables, even expanded it a little bit. And then stuff just started to die. Stuff, Some stuff started just to thrive. And then I ran into problems with the bugs eating, you know, the bugs here. I used to always tell my husband, North Carolina is just so buggy. You won't find that in Texas, you know, with the exception of a little spider and flies. That's not true. So bugs have been eating it. So I've been going through a learning process on learning how to, you know, keep my plants thriving. And then we had the frost. Some plants died. Then another frost. Other plants died. So now we're down to Brussels sprouts. Which, ironically, I planted in February. They're supposed to have a 90-day harvest uh, record on it. Look, them the longest growing uh, Brussels sprouts I've ever had. But I think they're dead now because we had a couple of frosts last week. And we've got some more this week. So I just said, okay, no more with my garden as far as caring about what's in it. A lot of it I've just tilled the dirt and took out the old, um, the old roots and everything. And I'm going to preserve that dirt and reuse that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo my garden. So instead of the way it's going now, I'm going to make it a big square. And I'm going to surround it by larger gates. So it'll be like a place you can just walk in, open the gate, close it, sit down, have tea, do the plants, the flowers, the butterflies, the hummingbirds. Because I'll have uh, a bird uh, feeder and all that kind of stuff. So I went to my favorite store Wally World because nobody has anything of anything but I went to Walmart and I got um some greenhouse starter kits so you guys know I have a, gar a greenhouse if you, if you don't it's it's there um and then 
these things you can put in the greenhouse. It's just like a little tray. It's got 70 little holes in it with mesh packaging that you put seedlings in. And I figure if I can start now doing the seedlings, you know, if the first frost is after, you know, in mid-February and we're getting ready to hit mid-February in a couple of weeks, I should be able to go ahead and start my seedlings so that way when spring comes around I'll have some kind of harvest and then I'll plant my summer uh, vegetables and fruit in the in March or April so I can have a summer harvest and so on so I've been watching different videos I've been watching um, uh, Farmer Q on uh, the Lion's Den I think it's the Lion's Den or Lion Crest I'll put the link here uh cali cam i'll put the link here i've been watching different people mm. i've been watching different people and uh i belong to a gardening group on facebook so it's been helping uh so i think i won't make some of the same mistakes that i did before and um i won't try to do as much as i did so because i did i just i was just a plant fool y'all i was just playing everything so i just know that there are certain things that are only uh are only going to strive in our area. I think I'm in area or zone 8A, so I have to make sure the plants are being planted for that zone and that they are being planted during the right time of year. Like, I don't know why I tried to plant watermelon when it was cold, you know, or even strawberries. You know, those are, you know, just different things that I'm learning now. So I am redoing the garden and it's going to be beautiful. And Lord willing, it's going to be beautiful. So I bought some stuff for that. I bought some cleaning stuff. I got some food. Um, I'm dealing with worm casters and all that. Look, y'all, I used to be a girly girl. Bugs, worm casters, and all the, uh, compost. Ew. But look, I'll be out there with my hat on, my tall socks and my shoes. And, you know, so, you know, because you guys, I don't know about you. But going into the store there's hardly anything available as it is and the stuff that you get it's not very good quality so being able to grow my own fruits and vegetables that's a plus for me and growing learning from growing tomatoes this past season y'all my tomatoes tasted so much better than this than the tomatoes i bought from the store so that's what i am you know looking to do and um i just hope that you know i can I can, you know, reap a bountiful harvest this planting season. Oh, the last thing I want to talk about is, notice my smile? Yes, my gap is back. Many of you who have not followed me may not know that I had braces. I had adult braces. Go back and look at the previous videos. And I told you guys that I bit into a bone one day and... So I got braces. I got the braces taken off. Now I may have gotten the braces taken off too soon, but y'all was in braces for 18 months. And they were talking about another eight months. And I'm like, no, my mouth hurts. I gotta get them adjusted every week. But um, so I had the braces taken off in 2000, was it late 2019? I think it was, yeah. And so in addition to having them taken off i had retainers i had permanent retainers under the bottom or under the back of the top and the bottom teeth and then i had plastic retainers made and then on top of that because they could the the braces could not close up my gap entirely because i don't know if you guys can see here i have that piece of meat right there sorry for showing you guys to tap my mouth but i had that piece of meat there and in order for that to for them to close all the way up i would have to have that surgery on that to have that cut out and you guys with diabetes i'm just not so open to being cut on and so on so um i didn't do that so what they did was they put a filling to cover the gap the rest of the way so as i was eating a piece of chicken one day on bending down i bit down onto a bone and it broke so if you guys can see there's still a little piece of it left so I was going to get it fixed there and I thought, you know what, I'll wait till I get to Texas. I was going to wait to do everything when I got to Texas. But I was talking to a dentist. I went and got my teeth cleaned and I know and I make sure I call the insurance company. This is considered a filling to get that repaired. But the dentist that I went to so far, had, that I've gone to so far, you know, 
they want to sell me this, this, and that. And uh, to do that, it's going to cost $1,200 to do this. And then we got to pay $1,900 to do this and that for a filling. When I'm like, no, a filling is covered by the insurance. But they, they, look, I've had this gap all my life. And every now and then what I'll do is I will wear my retainers and close it up. Like if I'm doing a photo shoot or something, you guys might be like, wait a minute. Why is her gap closed and it's not closed now? I'll put the retainers on for a day. If I leave them on for a day, it'll close the, the gap back up. But I can't eat anything because as soon as I eat something, it just opens it right back up. So um, I thought about getting braces again. I don't know. Maybe if I do, I'll just do on the two front teeth. Or I just might just let it be what it is because we're getting ready to have to get my granddaughter braces. So yes, the joys of parenthood again. <laughs> so yeah. Well, that's all I have for my life update. I'm sorry it took so long to um, get one to you. Hopefully it won't be too long uh, for the next one. I try to do them every month or I was in the past, but something might not happen within a month. So um, I'll try to get them as often as I can. Let's just put it that way and just go from there. That way I'm not making any promises on the frequencies just when I can, uh, but I'll make sure it won't be a year or so in between the next one. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Please, again, if you have not subscribed, take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. Share this video. Leave a comment below. I love talking to you guys. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day, guys.